So you uh, are thinking about moving to the Austin area and Georgetown has come up on your radar along with Cedar Park, Leander, Round Rock, things like that. Um, but you're not really sure what makes Georgetown unique. These are 10 things that you didn't know about Georgetown. So you, I'm sure you've heard that Austin is growing by leaps and bounds. It's crazy. People are moving here every day, but it's not just Austin. It's the whole Austin area. So when I talk to folks about what's going on in the real estate world in Austin and they say, oh, no, 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 but we're looking about moving uh, to Georgetown or Round Rock or Leander. Everything that's happening in Austin is exploding even more so in these areas because there's actually room to grow. And Georgetown has been growing like crazy for the past several years, but specifically the last 10 years. Real quick, before we get too far into the video, I realized I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Tiffany Moore. I'm a realtor right here in Austin, Texas. If you have any questions about moving here, buying a home here, I'm happy to help. All my info is in the description so you can find it there. All right, back to the video. So Georgetown is growing at a rate of 6.27% annually, but it really exploded from 2010 to 2020. So the population increased by 90% in the past 10 years. It literally almost doubled in the past 10 years, which is insane. Um, it went from 47,000 people in 2010 to 90,000 people in 2020. But Georgetown is still relatively low in population density. So right now it has a population density of about 1,600 people per square mile versus Austin has about 3,000 people per square mile. So literally about half the population density that Austin has. So has this ever happened to you? You're opening up your mail and all of a sudden you get a ticket for when you were speeding or ran a red light and you're thinking like, that's not me. And you look at the picture and it's like, oh, that's my car and that's me driving. I guess that was me. The good news is, is that that is not going to happen to you in Georgetown. So there are uh, a ton of cameras on some of the traffic lights. Those are only to monitor the flow of traffic. Those are not used to ticket you for running a red light or to monitor speeding or anything like that. Also, there were only 11 traffic lights in Georgetown. Isn't that cute? The third thing about Georgetown is tornadoes. People ask me about catastrophic weather incidents in the Austin area, but really they, they talk mostly about flooding. And flooding is really something that you need to be worried about if you're more in South Austin, not so much if you're in the Northern areas like Leander and Georgetown, but tornadoes are something that you need to be aware of. So the tornado index for the US is 136. In Texas, it's 208, so much higher than the rest of the country. And in Georgetown, it's about 220. So a little bit higher than the rest of Texas, but not too, too bad. Austin's index is 224, so pretty much the same as Georgetown. But uh, what really is gonna put this into perspective is I tell people that we really don't need to worry about tornadoes unless you're living in North Austin like Dallas. In Dallas, they have 156 outdoor warning sirens to warn you when a tornado is coming. It is definitely a big deal in Dallas. It's less of an issue in Georgetown, but the risk in Georgetown and Austin is higher than the rest of Texas. So it's something that you kind of need to have on your radar. Number four, free bikes. The Georgetown Library has free bikes that you can check out with a library card. You can rent them for 24 hours and just ride around the square downtown or take them on some of the trails that are super accessible to downtown. Um, but just one of the awesome perks about Georgetown is you don't have to have a plan. You just go down there, rent a free bike. They give you a helmet too, so you don't have to worry about your brain spilling all over the concrete. Um, lots of fun. While you're there, go see some of the murals and the sculptures and all that good stuff. It's really a great way to get to explore a big chunk of downtown Georgetown, which is really, really pretty and lots of historical landmarks. Number five is Three-Legged Willie. This is not a dirty joke. It's actually a very important historical piece about Georgetown. So Three-Legged Willie is an actual statue in the square of downtown Georgetown. Um, his real name is Robert McAlpin Williamson. He was born in maybe around 1804 and he lived until about 1859. He's a very interesting and rich history. Um, he was a Republic of Texas Supreme Court Justice. He was a state lawmaker. He was a Texas Ranger. Williamson County was named after him, which Georgetown is the county seat of Williamson County. And he is the first white person documented playing the banjo. At age 15, he caught tuberculous arthritis, which caused his right leg to be permanently stiff at like a 90 degree angle. 
So in order to walk, he had to have a wood leg placed under his knee because um, his knee was just bent like this all the time. And that is how he got the nickname Three-Legged Willie. So number six is downtown Georgetown. It's called The Square. It was one of the most beautiful square in all of Texas. The tourism board claims that it is one of the best preserved Victorian and pre-World War I downtown historic districts. Um, the Williamson County Courthouse is a centerpiece. It was built in 1911. And we just talked about how Georgetown is the county seat for Williamson County. There's lots of restaurants and shops, and it really gives you kind of a glimpse of what shopping and life was like in the early 1900s in the area. There's definitely been some developments, but you can really see how this was like the center of Georgetown and uh, you know, just the place for all the gathering, gathering and things like that. Something else that's cool about it is the square is open container. So something that I like to do is going to this awesome pizza place there called 600 Degrees Pizza. Um, they have one of the best beer menus in Georgetown. Um, really good selection of uh, breweries from like California, Colorado, Seattle, the New England area, as well as local breweries in Texas. So you can go and get uh, an IPA, walk around the square. There's some other wineries in the area too. Just kind of have a beverage, walk around and enjoy yourself while you're in the most beautiful square in Texas. All right, so poppies. Georgetown is the red poppy capital of Texas. So a young soldier in World War I visited Flanders Fields and sent home red poppy seeds to grow wild across Georgetown. And they grew wild in the area for many, many years. And they're not growing as wild as they once were, but the citizens of Georgetown have made sure that this remains a part of the history. Um, so there are pockets around the square in downtown Georgetown where you can find the red poppies. Um, there's actually a poppy map for the best places to find red poppies in the square. Um, there's a red poppy festival in the spring. Um, the poppies usually bloom from late March to mid April. So you'll have to just kind of follow the map and check for the red poppies. But uh, the poppies are like a, big, a really big thing in Georgetown. So you'll see sculptures of them all around the square. And then if you go to San Gabriel Park, there is a huge playground where they have like these massive red poppy sculptures um, in the area for kids to like run around and play and, and do all that fun stuff. So it's like a red poppy themed playground. So there is a lot of outdoor art in Georgetown, everything from like murals to sculptures. We were just talking about the huge red poppy sculptures in the playgrounds. Most of it is, is around the square, or around the university area. Um, some of my favorite murals are the greetings from Georgetown mural, the JFK, there's a JFK uh, Ich bin ein Berliner from his famous speech in Germany. That is on the wall for a business called the Berliner, which is actually a German beer hall. So it's really neat when the art on the building goes with the business and, and everything kind of comes together like that. Another one that I really love and I think has a really cool story is one that was painted on the 1970s and it's a reproduction from the Great Wave of Kanagawa. It was commissioned by the couple who owned the house um, and still stands today. So it was painted in the 1970s. This is about 50 years later. Um, it's just really cool when things like that stand the test of time. Also, we talked about uh, the three-legged Willie statue. There's a lot of other statue, statues and sculptures around Georgetown. Um, I just love it that there is a big focus on creating the art and preserving the art in that area. Number nine is Southwestern University. And you may know that it is a private university in Georgetown. It's one of the most expensive universities in the area. It is the oldest university in, in Texas. It was established in 1840. I'm gonna talk about the history of Southwestern University as it relates to University of Texas at Austin, because I think it's really interesting. So before it became Southwestern University, charters have been granted by the Texas legislature for four um, higher learning institutions. And uh, in 1873, all the, all of these institutions unionized together and they opened in Georgetown, Texas as Texas University. But the state wanted to preserve that name, Texas University, for the University of Texas at Austin. And so instead they decided to call it Southwestern University so that later on um, UT could open and, and use that name. It's considered to be founded in 1840 um, and claims to be the oldest university in Texas and the second oldest co-ed liberal arts college west of the Mississippi. 
Uh, it's such a cool area. There's lots of old historic homes around Southwest University that were built in the 1800s. There's lots of history in the building. I think it's really cool that this is the second oldest co-ed liberal arts college. Um, I went to school in Florida and one of the state universities there um, was started as a female only college and then only became co-ed in the 1900s. So it's really interesting to me that this university began as a co-ed university in the 1800s. Okay. Tenth thing that you didn't know about Georgetown is there is a really cool food scene there. So we're gonna talk about two restaurants um, that I get confused all the time because their names are very identical and I never know which is which. So Monument Cafe is kind of like a down home uh, country style diner and the other restaurant is called El Monumento. And El Monumento is kind of a, a higher scale interior Mexican restaurant. Obviously those two cuisines are totally different, but every single time I'm trying to remember which restaurant to go to, I'm like, is it Monument Cafe or El Monumento? So I'm gonna explain you the difference between the two. We talked about Monument Cafe, um, American comfort food, typical diner, stuff like that. You've probably seen it on diners, drive-ins and dives. I think they had this thing called like King Ranch Chicken. Um, anyway, that's what Monument Cafe is for. El Monumento, on the other hand, is a really big, like 7,700 square foot restaurant. It's got a really beautiful patio that overlooks the Blue Hole Lagoon. Um, one thing that you should know about Austin and the restaurants here is we like a lot of things spicy, especially our drinks. I love a spicy cocktail. El Monumento has a green chili margarita for hatch chili season. So if you don't know anything about Texas or the Southwest, every year on August, September, um, we have hatch chili season. It's when the hatch chilies are harvested and we put them in everything. It's pretty much like pumpkin spice latte for the Southwest. We also like to make our dessert spicy. So our drinks and our desserts. Um, so in addition to the hatch green chili margarita that they have right now that's seasonal, they also have uh, a Mexican chocolate brownie a la mode. So if you've never had Mexican hot chocolate before, it's so good. It's not as sweet as like regular Swiss Miss hot chocolate. It's a little bit more bitter. It's kind of earthy and roasty. I would almost compare the taste to like a coffee or a stout beer. Um, and then, so you have this like roasty earthy mix and then we add cinnamon and cayenne and it just gives it this like really robust flavor. So it's not like putting cinnamon and cayenne in your Swiss Miss. That probably wouldn't be very good, but all of like the roasty earthiness flavors combine. I, I, it's one of my favorite drinks in the fall and in the winter. Um, again, I love spicy drinks and this is perfect. So they have a Mexican hot chocolate brownie at El Monumento that they're serving for the season as well. So definitely one of the coolest places to check out in Georgetown if you're looking for a nice dinner, somewhere to have some good cocktails or just relax with a beautiful view. Definitely check that out, but do not get it confused with Monument Cafe. Whatever you're looking for, if you go to the other one, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. So here is a bonus tip of things that you probably didn't know about Georgetown. I didn't know this until I started kind of exploring the topic. In Austin, you can bring your dog everywhere. Like bring your dog to Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, the grocery store, the baseball fields, um, you know, you're shopping for t-shirts and skirts and stuff like that. Bring your dog anywhere. Georgetown is not that way. So I had a client come into town once and they were traveling with their dog. We were gonna find a cool spot to go. We were trying to go to um, El Monumento, uh, you know, to sit on the patio and take a look at the view and have some spicy margs. But Georgetown is decidedly like not dog friendly. You cannot take your dog everywhere in Georgetown. In fact, you can't really take your dog anywhere in Georgetown. So bonus tip, fun fact number 11, do not plan on bringing Fluffy everywhere with you if you go to Georgetown. Just drive a little bit further south. You can take them everywhere in Austin. So I know you've probably started doing your research about Georgetown. Hopefully you have some more information to tell you how Georgetown is really unique. It's not really like any other suburb. There's a lot of cool stuff to do here. So next time someone tells you that Georgetown is just old and sleepy, now you know the real deal.